Google's back with a $699 software first phone. The question is, should you buy it? My name is Jacqueline, and in today's video, we're gonna answer that question. Let's do it. The phone is pretty small, definitely super comfortable in the hand, and I think that they're going with like a one size fits all approach here, probably to cut down on manufacturing costs, and I think that that was actually a really good move. This is a great size for most people. The color, sort of sage, probably not a great color for most people. How sick would it be if it was like a hot pink, right? Hey, editor Jacqueline popping in here to say, what the heck was I talking about? They like he dodged a bullet by not having to pick out this color. But regardless of which color you get, you're gonna get this really nice finish. And truly Google does finishes like no other brand. Like this should feel like cheap, but it doesn't. Instead, it feels really comfortable and cozy in the hand and it just feels right. Kind of goes along with Google's like fun brand aesthetic. They do a really nice job. I'm a huge fan of it. And hardware is not even the focus this year. The focus is definitely on software. So if the focus is on software this year, does that mean that the hardware is super mediocre? Well, yes and no. So the speakers are not great. We're gonna talk about OnePlus Nord and Pixel 4a. I've been testing both. I have a ton of thoughts about them. Darsh, from just seeing the stuff online, like seeing the spec list, which phone would you pick up? They lack depth and they do sound a little bit tinny. And as someone that listens to a ton of music on my phone, they were somewhat of a disappointment. The fingerprint sensor on the other hand is great. It's in the perfect spot where I just naturally hit it. It has the perfect amount of indentation so it's easy to access and it's super, super, super reliable. And the buttons are fine. The power button has like a different finish than the volume rockers, which makes it a little easier to tell them apart. But you know me by now, I much prefer the volume rockers on the left side, not on the same side. Kind of is what it is. Feels like more and more phones are putting them on the same side. The camera module on the back is super sleek and it's almost flush. And we'll talk more about the camera later. And the display is pretty killer. Definitely the best looking pixel display so far. It has thin bezels, a small punch out and fast refresh rate. So I'm kind of in love with it. I know that some people did want 120 Hertz instead of 90. As someone that tests out a lot of 120 Hertz phones, I understand that it does definitely look a little bit better, but 90 Hertz kind of feels like the perfect compromise at this price to still get high refresh rate. And also it helps the battery and the battery life is great. This thing crushes a full day, no problem. All right, it feels like we should talk about performance and software now because that's kind of what Google is all about. And you know what I'm all about? Getting you to subscribe to the channel. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you don't miss the next one. That was kind of smooth, right? Performance, also kind of smooth. This phone has a 765G. So on paper, a lot of people didn't think it was gonna be that great. And again, on paper, it seems like it would be a lot worse than the Note 20 Ultra or phones that have the 865. But I actually think it was a really smart move on Google's part because again, this phone is cheaper and it also helps with creating that great battery life experience. And they paired it with eight gigabytes of RAM. So this phone still feels really fast for the daily, especially with that great software optimization. I have not experienced any problems with speed on this phone. Happy to report that. And the 765G also enables 5G support. So that may not be important to you right now, but with the three years of guaranteed updates on this phone, it could be really important if you're planning on keeping it for that long, because three years from now, I think that 5G is going to be a lot more integrated into society than it is right now. And the software is really where it excels. It's really smart. So many little things culminate into an experience that puts many other phones that run Android to shame. Call screen, assistant integration, voice transcription, what's playing, live captions pretty much across the board, and the little animations that happen when you interact with a phone that just do exactly what you're expecting it to do in a really satisfying manner. And if that wasn't enough, get ready to be blown away by the camera app computational photography yet again. The photos for the most part are great. Sharp, contrasty, and even in bad conditions, this phone pulls through. The night sight is really getting incredible, almost too incredible. In the last camera comparison I made, I showed a shot that was taken on this and people were commenting that it didn't look like you would expect it to look for a nighttime shot. And I understand that it definitely really brightens up the image. So it's a personal preference thing. It makes it maybe not look the most realistic, but I think that it's super pleasing to look at. So you can decide if that's what's important to you. Another thing that I learned in the comment section of that video is that this phone, on the viewfinder, especially in lower lighting conditions, will bump up the ISO and the brightness to make it so you can actually see what you're shooting, which I think is really cool, but it leads us to this really big point that a lot of the times the image that you see on the viewfinder is not the image that you actually end up with. This phone does a lot of post-processing, which in the past wasn't really a big deal because it was very fast, but they no longer have the neural core chip in here. It's not a huge deal, but you definitely have to wait for your photo to process. And if you're trying to like take a photo in the moment and you just wanna look back at it to see what it looks like to see if you have to reshoot it, this may screw you over because it takes a little bit longer. The selfies are also not the most flattering thing in the world. So if you are an avid selfie taker, the focal length and Google's processing of your skin will not make you look like your best self, in my opinion. So that doesn't matter a ton to me, but if you do take a lot of selfies or a lot of photos of yourself, like maybe you're an Instagram model, maybe that would matter because it's not gonna be your most flattering picture. Like if I take a photo on this and two other phones, 
chances are I look better on the other phones. So for the camera, it's really clear that Google went all in on the software and didn't really do much with the hardware. And I think that that's okay for this year because it still is best in class in terms of photos, but there is a lot of competition in this space now. And Apple and Samsung are a little bit ahead in terms of telephoto shots, especially Samsung. This phone just can't compete with that incredible zoom range. So I think next year we will have to see a hardware improvement from Google in order for this phone to kind of still keep its first place. And for video, it definitely is not first place. It's much better than in the past, but with all pixels, the photos are really where it's at. And I would love to see Google spend a little bit more time on the video quality and making it as good as the photo quality because I still think that Apple has the best video quality in the game. But Apple's phones this year are $1,000 and $829. So this phone is significantly less and boy, was that intentional. So Google picked this price so we, like you and me, would have very different expectations from it. We're not expecting it to have a really dense metal build or 120 Hertz or a telephoto or multiple size options. They lower our expectations. We don't have the $1,000 flagship expectations. And they also make this phone a lot more accessible to people. So more people will buy it and hopefully get hooked on the Pixel experience, which is the software experience and the camera experience. And then Google will hopefully have a service customer because again, software and services are their business model and having them on your phone makes it that much easier to sell them other things. And Google still gets about 90 to 95% of the way there to like the flagship title. So I think that if you don't care about that last five to 10%, you should pick it up. But if you do care about it, the Note 20 Ultra may be more aligned with you. And you can check out the video I made on that right here. If you wanna see more camera samples from the Pixel 5, I just did a camera comparison. You can check that out right here. Thank you so much for choosing to spend this time with me. Like actually, I really appreciate you. And hopefully you subscribe and I'll catch you next week for another awesome video. Thank you again for your time. I'll see you then, hopefully. All right, bye.